when Jacob was two, he was diagnosed with moderate to severe autism. And at that time, they told us he would probably never read, probably never tie his shoes, and he was put in a special ed program. So, And difficult times. I've read your book, Extraordinary Times. Um, you kind of um, stopped talking, didn't you? Yes. But it turns out, and your mum found this out after lots of hard work, that in fact, you were doing an awful lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Um, I it was to, easy to explain. I must have been doing some kind of math back then. So you were doing maths? Yeah. Um, age two or three. And you, find, you realize that something quite extraordinary was going on, didn't you, when he was, what, about four? Yes. Um, well, he was in a very strict therapy program, and mm. he was doing many hours of therapy a week, um, just working on his lower skills and trying to get them up, you know, trying to get him to talk again and things like that. And then... Um, when he wasn't in therapy, I noticed him doing spectacular things, like he would recreate maps all across our floor using Q-tips. Um, and they would, they would be maps of places we'd visited, and he'd memorize every street. Mm -hmm. And um, he would recite the alphabet forwards and backwards and um, learn to speak in about four different languages when he started talking again to me. Jacob, do you remember that time? Do you remember when you were doing this? Slightly. Yeah. yeah. What, what, so what is your recollection of, of what was going on? So, I mean, at the time, I used to get out, like, this little string, and I used to wrap it all around the room and make all these little patterns. But I, I don't know. Now I think back to it, it must have just looked like a mess. <laughs> Did you know what it meant to you, I mean, at the time? Yeah, they, they, you know, they, they were in interesting little patterns. Um, okay. And these are math proper mathematical patterns yeah. which um, people have spent many years working out, and you had worked them out? Uh, yes. Who was the first person who realised that, that Jacob had, a, you know, a, a re, a, something very special in terms of his mathematical powers of working things out? When he was about three years old, um, I took him out into the country, and we went out under the stars. And just, he was not talking yet, and um, I really wanted him to have normal, typical childhood experiences. And so I took him out and just, we laid on the roof of the car, we played jazz music, and we just had um, a wonderful mother-son time, dance together. And then a few months after that, we went to a local planetarium. And a professor there asked a question about the size of the planets, or the moons going around Mars, and the relative masses and complicated concepts in physics. And Jacob's little hand shot up, and he answered the questions. Age four. Age three and a half. Three and a half. We because you just surprised. you just knew things. Did you? It was it was just straight away in your head. Yeah. Things that the rest of us struggle for for hours to work out just come. I, I straight. mean, the problem with the lecture it was trivial. It was just some. Gra <laughs> That's well, okay. You, some, you can you can say that. So other people are finding it difficult, and straight away things make sense to you. Um, Is that how it works? Yeah, I guess so. Um, so tell us about now. Um, so you went to university when you were about 11. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you're studying, what are you studying? You're going to study a PhD in? Um, I'm studying condensed matter physics specifically. I'm studying um, these PT symmetric lattices. It's like um, a quantum system, but if you reverse it in space and time, it's the same. So it's cool. Okay. And you worked that out, did you yourself? Or? <laughs> I'm working on it with my advisor. Oh, um, it, it, um, having read the book, what's amazing about this story, Christine, is that you know here was this child who wasn't speaking, who was on a sort of a track, a completely different track, um, and you have managed to realise that there are so many parents out there with children suffering from I don't know Asperger's or autism. What is your advice to them? I mean, they're obviously not all going to be geniuses, but what's your, what's your advice? Well, I think that every child is beautiful and every child has a special gift inside of them. Mm. Um, regardless of what difficulties you face or if you're a little bit different. Um, and so with Jacob, it was just a matter of finding that and tuning into it. And I operate off of a concept called muchness, which is just surrounding children with things they love, be it music or art, whatever they're drawn to and love. 